What if I were to tell you that I'm of the belief that every single one of us is participating in what could only be described as the largest alternate reality game ever? And we don't even know it. Now, to sort of bring about this hypothesis, I would like to present to you a bit of background for the cause. You see, growing up, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn in the 1980s and early 90s, it was a very different town than what it appears as it is today. It was a town full of gamers, not what we've been accustomed to thinking of as gamers, but more so seekers of chance and challenge, whether it be through cards or games of chance, or particularly for my neighborhood, a Latino-dominated neighborhood, it was dominoes. Now, there was, this was no more prevalent in any one person in my life than with my grandfather, Jose, affectionately known as La Chagara, or the little freshwater shrimp. <laughs> Don't ask me why he has that nickname. That's for another TED Talk altogether. This man is, quite frankly, an official, undeniable, hustler, and original gamer, an OG. He would spend his days and nights working in La Marqueta of Moore Street, located conveniently between Humboldt and Graham Avenue, the avenue of Puerto Rico, selling his wares, his produce, fruit, vegetables, to the neighborhood. Each day he would go working the New York City grind, going in and out of the market, and each and every night he would find himself at the end of a dominoes table, looking for that one opportunity to yell, Capicu! Now, I'm gonna take it that no one understands what I just said right there. Capicu is, is technically the term for a perfect game. It's a war cry. It's the ultimate perfect. When you end the table and you take everyone's points. Now, Growing up in one of the biggest inner city car strip capitals of New York made it very, very difficult for people like me to go outside and have fun. There was the Police Athletic League, there was other little leagues that we could participate in, but it wasn't necessarily the safest place. So I needed some sort of escape, a way out a way to release my mind in different ways. And that came through literature, through books, through exploring my own mind and finding a way to be outside, but not really outside. I would occasionally find myself traveling up and down the eastern seaboard of the United States with my family on f far and few between trips down the Carolinas, of course, seeing the theme parks in Florida, and occasionally forgetting to return my library books. I still own this book. <laughs> it is one of my favorites. It allowed me to explore. Now, there's a place in time in my life where I could imagine everyone was thinking that high school is a chore. It's the biggest chore of all for a kid. You have to go in and you have to act like you want to be there. You have to act like you are the adult that you know you are, but you really aren't. I would be remiss to say that I think no one else can openly admit this, but the people that pushed me the most in life to actually inquire more about video games were my mother and father. They wouldn't admit this if you were to ask them, but I believe the reciprocity that was given to me in knowing and figuring out that if I were to be able to complete all of my primary studies, all of my work, my homework, I would be able to play games. I would be able to escape again. So each summer, I would travel, sometimes up and down the eastern seaboard, making sure that I would complete all of my homework, complete all of my challenges, so then I could go ahead 
and complete additional challenges in the game world. I would find myself each and every summer going to Puerto Rico to visit my family, my friends, each year getting older, a little bit more wiser, going into really, really, really scorching hot pizza parlors, putting down my quarter and saying, I've got next. But no one truly understood what I was saying because no one spoke English. I also had an opportunity to check in with my very own life checkpoint, my grandmother, Felicita, who's one of the most advanced thinking people technologically, but not necessarily the most tech savvy. She hates all forms of computers. She hates any sort of device that has to do with it, but she will constantly ask me, what's this about, Mark? What's that about? What is these juegos, these games, these experiences that people are talking about and every single child continues to be enthralled with? So, after completing my time at Murray Bertram High School and growing, learning, finishing with a diploma in computer science with a speciality in C++ programming, which is ancient by any standard right now with the dawn of Python and JavaScript. I managed to make it here into this illustrious university that I can only proclaim as one of the key points and life achievements that I am vastly proud of each and every day. I believe education is everything in life and that the life experience that you take into going to a university and leaving your home is second to none. Life experience nowadays tends to be a little bit underwhelming for everyone's opinions. They seem to sort of take this as an as a off-putting section of their lives. I think life experience allows us to grow more and to see each and every part of the game design in our true lives. I fell in love, like every freshman does in school, with the scientific method. Even though I had already been proclaiming this as throughout my days, I would do it. I would commit this challenge to myself of learning new things, trying new tests, evaluating my analysis. I would take each and every moment to then find myself worrying about game theories and what makes us whole. I had two challenges in my life when I was graduating. Should I choose the thesis that I eventually ended up going with or should I go with this game theory? And like any true practitioner of the scientific method, I needed more data. I needed more time for myself to be able to come up with this, which is a fairly simple theorem when you think about it. You take every single thing that you do, every single thought experiment that you complete in your life, and you merge that with your internal motivation, our driving force. You're matching philosophical context with psychological context, and you're taking your everyday life so I broke this theorem down into two succinct parts. One is the closed state. Now the closed state is not fully closed. It allows you to leave the system of your extrinsic motivation. Our extrinsic motivation is every single thing that we want in life. Every single thing that we're driven towards because it's there. I want the latest car. I want the latest shoes. I want the latest anything that you want is the extrinsic motivating factor within this closed partial system. It allows us to use this drive to complete all of these tasks, all of these challenges, to then allow us to succeed in the mission. Now, the open partial system is more of an intrinsic motivating factor. It allows for all of the different pieces in our world, all of our internal drive, to then motivate ourselves to create other instances, other missions in life, other achievements and challenges. Silicon Valley, the land of green and gold. No one knows this, but every single gamer needs to be at this location at some point in their life. 
not necessarily to stay for a while, but it is the place in the world that allows us to grow. Not like New York. New York, you become hardened. You become the solid rock that it can break any boundary. Now, going out to the San Francisco Bay Area, I found myself a little bit lost in a world that was way bigger than I could have ever imagined. And this place is one of the place of wonders. It's a little bit overwhelming, and when I was given the opportunity, I had spoken to my wife, and I said, how are we going to make it? We have no family out there, no friends. We're starting from nothing, from scratch. And the one thing that I took away is that every single time you find yourself in a challenge, you could just gamify it. You could create this world that's separate from every single thing that you think about. You take yourself in a, in a space, in this game space that we all find ourselves in, and you make it into the giant world from Super Mario Land, or you make it some other place, some other goal, some other mission. Everything in my life became gamified. I would walk down the street in San Francisco, Chinatown, and see the world that I've already seen in games. I've already seen this place. So it wasn't so daunting to me. I was able to complete every single challenge that I had in front of me. Why? Because I had already beaten in level three. So what was missing from my life? What did I take away from this? There was always this sinking feeling that I was missing something back home. I couldn't fill this void no matter how hard I tried, no matter how different roles in the gaming industry that I was able to find or not find or, or grow through. So I needed to find a way back, back to home base, back to where everything started. The difficulty in this is you're coming back and you're also renewed. You're, you're finding yourself in a newer game space, a different Williamsburg, a different New York. So what do you do? Do you return to your roots or do you continue to grow as you've always done? I definitely found my roots coming back to New York because as I stated before, every single thing that we've done is within a game space. I would recognize things on the street now in a different sense, not necessarily from a game, but with a life and game merger. This is a piece of art that I found on the second day that I was back in New York City. I said that this is where we need to be. And my wife agreed, and that was the reason why we came back home. Did you ever stop to think of it? All kids play those games, and the minute they stop, they begin to grow old. This was one of the premier Twilight Zone episodes that I always take with in my life. It's called Kick the Can. Now, I saw this episode every January 1st for the five years I was in Silicon Valley. It's one of the examples of, once again, gamifying our lives and realizing that once we stop playing games, we stop living, we stop growing. We stopped seeing. When I came back home, I actually completed my hypothesis. And I want to state it to you now. Our lives are nothing but a boundless spinning wonder of a game space that grows and evolves with each and every moment of humanity's collective consciousness. It ever changes with each shared option and choice within time. We all have options. Gamers love options. I also came home a few years after to find my grandfather not doing so well. He's actually in the stages of early onset dementia. So when I visited him in the hospital, I realized he didn't know who I was. I was a stranger to him. Although not only 12 years ago, I was partying with him 
for my engagement in Puerto Rico in that second slide. Now, as I sat with him in the hospital, doing one of the most adult things that I can possibly do, I discussed my life and my travels and my adventures and my checkpoints and my mission completes. I showed him every single instance of a perfect memory. He looked at me and he smiled. The one thing that remains constant with him is his love for dominoes. I want to take this moment to remind everyone that life is not only what you make of it, it's how you make of it. How you're able to surpass every insurmountable challenge in your life. How you take this game state that we live in and breathe in and grow from it and establish yourself as somebody that is able to beat the level three boss, to find the quickest route home to get home to your family and eat a nice dinner. Or for me, the challenge is to eventually sit and one day have that match with that old, old school gamer. And hopefully, he doesn't beat me up too bad. But I know in my heart that he's still up for a challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you.